By popular demand, this week's UI workshop is about power auras. Since power auras is a fairly deep add-on, this video will be covering the basics of it and what I think most people would be interested in when first using the add-on. So let's get started. If you don't know what Power Auras is, it's basically an add-on that alerts you when specific things happen through visual effects and audio. I think the most popular way that people use it is to track when an ability is off cooldown. So let's take a look at that first. To open up the config, just type in slash power. Here are some examples of what I have set to show up when an ability is off cooldown. These are both normal rotational spells and rating cooldowns. They have a little green tint to them representing transparency, but that goes away once you close the config. You'll notice that instead of using custom textures, I have them set to use the actual spell texture. You do this by checking off Use Own Texture. Now sometimes the texture won't show up right away. If that happens, try reloading your UI or visiting the link I put in the info box. If we go back up top, you'll see the area where you can adjust how opaque the texture is, rotate it, squish it, or expand it. Below that is where you can adjust the size and position of the texture. You can either drag this selector to change the position, hit the plus and minus signs if you just want to give it a small nudge, or type in exact coordinates. Below this you'll see four tabs. The activation tab is what triggers the appearance of the texture. To get a texture to show up when an ability is off cooldown, you'll need to select Spell Cooldown under Activation By. Then just type in the ability that you're tracking. This can also work for part of a name or a combination of names. I'll show you more on that later. If the name of the spell is part of another name, try being more specific by using the spell ID, which can be found on the spell tooltip. To the right of the exact name checkbox is a field where you can put in other power aura IDs if you're interested in stringing multiple auras together. That's a little more advanced in this video, so I'll put a link below with some examples of how to do that. This area is basically where you tell it under which sort of environment you want your power aura to show. By default, mounted and in vehicle are marked with an X. The X means that the power aura will not show up under those conditions. Usually I have in combat checked so that the aura would only show up when I'm in combat, though I have it unchecked for this video. You can also tell it to show just for 5 mans, 10s, 25s, only if you're flagged for PvP, and so on. There are a lot of options here, you can even set it to show per spec. In the animation tab, you'll find your options for how you want the texture to animate in and out. I usually just have it set to fade in and grow as the animation is ending, but you can play around with these to get some interesting effects. The main and secondary animations are what the texture does while it's showing, in between the beginning and end animation. The sound section lets you pick out a sound to play when the aura begins or ends, which can be pretty handy since audible clues are often easier to notice than another cooldown on your screen. Power Auras comes with a few sounds, and you can always add your own too. You can also add timers to an aura. This tab is where you configure it. Timers have their own settings for position, opacity, color, and so on. Another popular way that people use power auras is to track buffs. A few examples of the buff auras I use are Serendipity, Borrow Time, and Inner Fire and Inner Will. Setting up buffs is pretty simple. Make sure that you have buffs selected from the Activation By menu. Serendipity is a little interesting because I only want it to show when I reach two stacks. So in the stacks field, I put in equal two. It also has a little animation for when it's activated, and a timer showing how long I have until the buff fades. My Inner Fire and Inner Will buff aura shows how you can track two buffs that are exclusive of one another with one aura. I also have Invert checked off, which means that this aura will display only if I do not have Inner Fire or Inner Will up. If you use the ability texture, it will use whichever texture was last displayed. Another example of buff auras are the ones I have set up for Vital Spark and Vital Flame. For the heroic Bellarock fight, it was important for me to track how many stacks of Vital Spark I had as I was stack building, and how long Vital Flame was active when I was healing the tank. Finally, an extremely useful way to use power auras is for debuffs. I have many auras set to show me when I have a debuff and need to do something about it. Think about each boss encounter and what key abilities go out, which are now easily found in a dungeon journal. For example, for the Tormented debuff also from the Heroic Bellarock fight, I have a monkey face texture that pops up when I have it and a timer that tells me how long I have it for. 
You can also just type in text for an aura with instructions to yourself. Back in ICC, I used this debuff aura for Vile Gas on Festergut that reminded me to stand still while I had it. I used this debuff aura for Frost Beacon on Cindergosa, with a timer letting me know that I needed to get into position ASAP. Spell cooldowns, buffs, and debuffs are three of the most common ways that people use power auras, but rest assured there are many more. Power auras is a powerful add-on and there's much more you can do with it, but this is a great place to start. Before we go, let's quickly walk through the process of making a new power aura. Remember to do slash power to bring up the config. Click on the new button and the effect editor will pop up with the default texture selected. You can add more textures through shared media, as I have done, so the textures that you see might be different from mine. Check off glow if you want it to be lighter and glowy, otherwise it will look a little bit more solid and have a darker outline around it. Play with the settings until you can get it to look the way you want it, and where you want it. Pick the activation category that you need. Let's try a new one like mana. Now I've set it so that if my mana goes below 35%, this aura will show up. If you don't feel like fussy much more with it, you can pretty much leave it like it is. Or you can play with the animation, add a sound effect, and get it to behave exactly how you want it. Easy. Now let's say you're feeling lazy and want to copy some power auras other people have already made for you. All you need to do is click on the import button and paste in the string of code and it will copy it into whichever page you have currently selected. You can also import a whole set of power aura strings, though be aware that when you do that, it will erase all of the auras on the page that you're currently on, so make sure to have selected an empty one first. I'll post some power aura resources below. That wraps up Power Auras 101. If you liked this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. As always, to recommend a topic for the next UI workshop, go to learntoRay.com slash forum slash UI suggest. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and watch us on Athene Live. Thanks for watching and have a great day.